Patience and understanding seem to be important when dealing with dropouts, most of whom have major family issues and who generally are at odds with the world. But the calming atmosphere in the school, along with devoted teachers who are determined to help these students, help create a haven for them. I often tell people they come in with this much hope, but it's still hope. And it's our responsibility to take this much and keep building it. Because they can learn, and they do, and that's what our students learn here. And in learning here, it's not just about getting a high school diploma, because in today's society, that's not enough. You need more. If it's, maybe it's to be the best parent you can be, maybe it's to be able to find a job in, in the world of work, and we're, we're in a wonderful location right next to the employment source, so we can hook students up with them. They learn how to use the different systems over there, learn how to do some job search. It's a great opportunity to start entering that world of work. I think when folks first come into the employment source, they are possibly a little bit overwhelmed, but it's still kind of probably scary, especially for someone, because the majority of the folks that are coming in here, of course, are unemployed. So that's the scary piece, is they, they're not sure that they're going to be able to find employment quickly. Um, some folks may be coming in here not really even knowing exactly what type of career they want to focus on. We actually take people then and sit them down and kind of walk through all the services that are available. Um, we answer any questions that they may have about how to utilize the equipment, um, where the job orders are. We have job order books for folks who want to maybe just leaf through the books and see a paper uh, copy of a job order. Everything you need is right here. It's considered a one-stop shop. You can come here. Um, get information on retraining, you can go back to school, you can get information on going back to school. Stark State uh, has always been involved in the community. Uh, we have uh, numerous advisory committees that we work with in the community. We're involved here with the employment source, the one stop, and we try to maintain, we have office hours over here, so that we can work with the employees as well as any of the employers when they come in if there's anything going on. We also, uh, this past year, you know that uh, the Maytag Hoover has had uh, large layoffs. Uh, we've worked directly with them as well as the employment source here to help meet uh, with their employees and offer them the opportunities, give them the information uh, if they're interested in coming back for uh, college level training um, to go ahead and process any financial aid paperwork that they might have to do. I'm always open for learning something new, so I don't, you know, I'm always willing to go in another direction. Um, I have found out that it is a very competitive marking market now, and um, you have to be prepared to bring your best assets forward. And I wasn't even sure what they were at this point. You know, you do the same thing for so long, you realize when you come here you have skills that you don't even realize that you may have. Here through the One Stop System and through the Workforce Investment Act, we do offer what we call youth programs and um, through the Workforce Initiative Association, who is the administrative entity running the One Stop here, the employment source, we have youth program dollars and, and each year we contract with various providers in Stark County to provide programming that helps kids get through high school, um, get a credential, and also give them the tools that they're going to need to actually enter the workforce. Where's everybody at today? They all call, are they just off today? Success stories abound both in Choices High School and the employment source. Chris Paxis is one of those stories. He came in about seven years ago looking for a job. He got help, advice, took classes, and now he's his own boss. I started my company with nothing, you know, basically I borrowed a broom and I borrowed a, a vacuum and made some business cards. I mean, that's a true story. I ran out of money. I had a penny jar. I shook out the penny jar with like $90 in that penny jar and I went and spent like 60 of it on business cards. And, uh, and through that batch of business cards, I, threw my, I closed my first deal. And, uh, and now year to date, you know, we employ over 30 people. The company, you know, is well into six figures and, uh, and that's all within, uh, you know, within this, with this time scheme. So I never used any uh, financing or anything. It all, it's all just from uh, hard work. Uh, we actually use the employment source now uh, for what I used to use it for, to find jobs, you know, to find people looking for employment. Corey Talkington works as a mechanic at a local cheese company in Louisville, takes classes at a local technical school, and it all started with a one-stop employment source. 
So I just thought it was great to see how much help out there is with financial aid and all that for school. I mean, in my situation, uh, it was the way it worked out. I got I went over to Employment Source and uh, got the WIA scholarship. Well, it's just me, my brother, my younger brother and sister, and my mom in one house. But I'm working for all four of us. So what that helps is is with the insurance, with mom's insurance that my income is not considered enough and that's how I get the employment source application. Not everybody's set up for a four-year college and, and I think our current education system really, for lack of a better term, pushes people towards that four-year degree, um, understanding that probably, you know, statistically I think uh, dropout rates for college freshmen is probably at like 50%. Um, our program dropout rate is nowhere near that because again our course is about 70% hands-on. I hope to have, well, have a nice, a nice house out, out in the middle of nowhere. Just, I just love the country. I've always grown up in the country, but I like to have my own, my own trucking company. Maybe have a couple trucks and then my fiance now, she, she said she'd be willing to help and everything with it. Corey is a super individual. Uh, with a, uh, a bright future. He's looking to uh, enhance his uh, opportunities as he grows uh, with Beery Cheese. But looking forward, we're looking out over the next five to 10 years of how can we bring in technical people. And that's full. That can continue to help us manage, maintain uh, our new uh, equipment, new technology. The Northeast Ohio region has been hit hard by some large companies moving out of state, leaving huge voids. But there is a certain toughness, a willingness to pull together in the area that surfaces at a job fair held in the soon to be closed World Headquarters building of Hoover, complete with a display of their famous vacuum cleaners. A surprising 28 companies showed up and the variety and expertise on display was heartening to the Hoover employees who would soon be out of work. We're looking for skilled labor. You know, we've not been a lot, very, very successful about, you know, just hiring out of running ads and stuff like that. And yeah, it's, it's very difficult to find the skilled labor. That's why I'm here, because when they close that facility, I would like to go on and continue some kind of career. Reach truck, and it says massive facility, shares foods, and it says reach truck operator. Okay. It'll come right to my desk, and as soon as you fill it out, I get it.